Halleluja. Praise you, Jesus, we love you. Ephesians chapter 5. Hallelujah. Say, this is God's holy word. I receive it with an open heart, open mind, and I'm going to be the good receiver and bear good fruit in Jesus' name. Right? It says in the Amplified Bible, therefore, be imitators of God. Okay, so you know what an imitator is? It's a guy that does everything that somebody else does. Why do you keep on imitating me? 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 Okay, so you know what an imitator is. Be he therefore imitators of God. Okay, he didn't say imitate Paul, imitate Peter, imitate Elijah, imitate Elisha, imitate Moses. Be ye imitators of God. I think why I would love to preach such a sermon is that I, I'm a type of person that from a small age I used to imitate people. And I think Johan is one, my son is also like that, you know. We used to imitate, I still do it, I like to imitate people, you know. I don't do it so often anymore because I get emails. But I, I, I love to imitate, you know. The, okay, what well, I mean, okay. Therefore, be imitators of God. Forget us. Listen to the Amplified. He says in brackets, copy him and follow his example as well, beloved children, imitate their father. The first time I read the scripture, uh, I remember we were at the Johannesburg showgrounds that years ago, it was still there by uh, uh, Witts University. Remember, they across from the planetarium. That was there with the Johannesburg show was before they moved to Nazareth. And uh, we were only there once because my father always worked. But this was one of the times that he was off. We don't know how he got off, but he had off that week. So... Uh, my father was walking in front, and me and my brother Frick, you all know him, so we were walking behind my father, so we were taking him out, then he would put his hand in his pocket. Yeah? Then both of us would put our hands in our pockets. Yeah? Okay? So then my father, and then we used to do that. I don't know if you ever did it. We really tried to copy my father in everything. And uh, so he says, copy God. As the, I don't know why I told that story. Maybe it doesn't even mean anything. Huh? As dear children. How many, when you were small, uh, even if your dad was ugly, you wanted to be your dad? And there was nobody like your dad, even if you know he was a creep. I, I remember, my father was everything. Okay? Even though he was ugly. At school, you know... I, I want to call my dad, you know, and my dad was this, my dad was the man that put the salt in the sea. My, my dad was everybody, okay. <laughs> no, I will not tell them, okay. I did tell my grade one teacher that. The, the day we went to school, my dad said, now they're going to ask you what your dad does. So if they ask you, you said, you say, my dad is the man that put the salt in the sea. <laughs> yeah, I remember Jeffrey uh, Fisser. She was so big with these little legs coming out of, the, out of underneath her dress. I don't know how she walked on those sticks, but she had this big body with the skinny legs. Okay. But Delia Folk School, welcome. Okay. So, and I mean, she had this tiny little legs sticking out. And she came walking into the class and she started, she says, now tell me your name. What does your father do? Oh, my father work at the mines. What does your father do? My father work at the mines. What does your father? Everybody work at the mines in those days. What does your father do? My father work at the mines. You know. What does your father do at the mines? I don't know. He work at the mines. Okay. Nobody knew. I mean, you're grade one. Your father. And she asked me, and your name? I said, Kuvasi. So Kuvasi, what does your father do? My father is the man that put the salt in the sea. And everybody laugh. I say, why are you laughing? So the guy behind me, I still remember it today, white, white, white hair. I don't know why his hair was so white. That was my first school fight. Because he laughed the loudest and the first. And when we came out, tea time. Okay. <laughs> he, 
He thought my father was the man that put the stars in the sky. <laughs> okay. Is that all right? Be ye imitators of God. Amplify it in brackets. Copy him as dear children. Hmm. Now, I just thought, if who, who is God? What does God look like? If God is invisible, yet 1 Timothy 3.16 tells us, you know, uh, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, seen of angels, taken up in glory, preached amongst men. Hmm? Yet the Bible says, unto the king eternal, immortal, invisible, Unto the only wise God be glory, honor. So God is actually invisible. He was made visible in the form of Jesus Christ. John chapter 14. Show us the Father, says Philip. And that suffices us. Philip, have I been with you so long and have you not seen me? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Yet, three years later, there he, went, he, there he goes back into the spirit realm. Now God is uns, unseen again. Now God is invisible again. So now... How, how does God look? What is God like? And for me, this is the best I can get. In the beginning, says John chapter 1, was the Word. Right in the beginning. And this Word was with God, and this Word was God. And everything that was made was made by this Word. And without this Word was nothing made that was made. So everything God is Word. That means everything Word is God. He upholds everything by the word of his power. Hebrews chapter 1. Okay, he upholds everything by the word of his power. So God and his word is inseparable. So this word, John chapter 1 verse 14, became flesh and dwelt amongst us. So God is the spirit God. John chapter 4, God is spirit. Yet God is a word God because everything was made by the word, which was not only with God, but is God. So God is word, and God's word is God. Hmm? So with that in mind, Moses is now in Egypt, and he's growing up. We know his sister Miriam is looking after him in Pharaoh's court. And by the time he's grown, God started speaking to Moses and said, Go, you know, I'll call you as a deliverer. Moses thought the Israelites will be happy. He go to them. They say, uh, 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 you're going to kill us like you killed that Egyptian yesterday. For those who know history. So Moses ran into the desert, married a woman there, and he was tending the sheep of his father-in-law. And one day he was walking there, tending the sheep, and there was the bush that was burning. Okay? And there was this burning bush. And uh, there were m m many bushes. But there was... Okay, this is a story that okay, some of you will not get, but it's all right. So Moses was drawn to this bush that was burning. And here comes the word speaking out of that bush. Moses. 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 That's how the movie makes it. You know, Charlton Heston. <laughs> Ten Commandments. Oh, forgive me. I'm just trying to get the people here. Mo Moses, remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Moses, take off your shoes from off your feet, my son. Moses, put your shoes back. <laughs> ah, okay, you know my story. <laughs> At last you got it after all these years of preaching. All right. So Moses comes closer. And God says, Moses, go tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Moses says, how am I going to do that? How am I going to go tell the people I've called you as a deliverer? God, but they're not going to believe me. Okay. This is where we'd love to pick up the story there in Exodus chapter 3. All right. Mm. Verse 12 says, certainly I will be 
certainly, God says, certainly I will be with you. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent you. When you have brought forth the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they shall say unto me, What is his name? What is his name? What am I going to tell the children of Israel? Hey, church, what is his name? What am I going to tell the children? What's your God's name? Oh, Buddha. What's your God's name? Allah. What's your God's name? Oh, you know, Hara Krishna. What is your God's name? Hara, Hara, Rama, Rama, Hara, Hara. What is your God's name? You know, what shall I tell them? All the other gods has got names. What am I going to tell them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto you. Copy God. God, who are you? I am. Okay, let's pick it up again in verse 19. And I'm sure that the king of Egypt will not let you go, not by a mighty hand. And I will stretch out my hand. Listen, God is still speaking. I will stretch out my hand and smite Egypt with all my wonders, which I will do in the midst thereof. And after that, he will let you go. Verse 4. Uh, chapter 4 verse 1 and Moses answered and said but behold they will not believe me listen to the words nor hearken unto my voice for they will say the Lord hath not appeared unto thee is there anybody in the room and the Lord said unto him what is that in your hand and he said a rod and he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and became a serpent. And Moses fled from it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth your hand, take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has appeared unto thee. Listen, if God would tell you something like that, if you would walk around with a stick in your hand, and God says, Hey, Sagi, where do I stock up your ground? I mean, if you throw that little stock of Sagi on the ground and it becomes a big slung, you're going to run like Moses wanted to run. Hmm? This snake to bite you. Okay. You know, so God is trying his best to tell Moses, listen, Moses, I'm going to be with you. Moses, I'm going to do wonders. Moses, I'm going to strike these people. Moses, take this rod. It can become a serpent and it become a rod. Moses, I'm going to do signs and wonders. Imagine God do that to you. Wow. Wow. Wow, it's not only supernatural, it's spectacular, man. It's like, woohoo, wahahoo, wahahoo, wow, wow. Moses, listen to Moses, verse 10. And Moses said unto the Lord, O oh Lord, I am not. O oh Lord, I am not. <laughs> Dear God, Mm -mm, help. Okay. Therefore, be ye imitators of God. Brackets. Copy him. Close brackets. As dear children copy their fathers. Hmm? What are you, God? What is your name, God? Who are you, God? How do you act, God? Oh, in the beginning, I was. This is how you can find out what I was in the beginning, which I am still now. In the beginning, there was the Word. The Word there was with God. The Word there was God. The Word there is everything that is God. God is everything that is that Word. Oh, wow. God, how can I tell them what is your name? Go tell them just two words. I am. What? Yeah, that's what I am. Moses, if you didn't hear, go tell them, I am. So that's why God would reveal himself to Moses in the next few years. I am Jehovah, Jireh, your provider. I am 
Jehovah Roi, your shepherd. I am Jehovah Shalom, your peace. And he goes on, I am all the Jehovah names. I am, I am, I am your provider. I am your peace. I am your banner. I am your righteousness. I am your everything. Go tell them that. Be ye imitators, copy God. So Moses, throw your rod. Wow. Moses, I'm going to do wonders. Go, Moses. Go tell them. I am not. I am not eloquent. Look at this. I'm not eloquent. Neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant. But I am slow of speech. I am of a slow tongue. And, and the Lord said unto him, Who hath made man's mouth? Who maketh the dumb or the deaf or the seeing or the blind? Have not I the Lord. Now therefore go and I will be with your mouth and teach thee what thou should say. Anybody. How many things does God say in this word about his promises? I'm the Lord that you thee. I'm God, your righteousness. I am your peace. I am your whatever. I am your shepherd and you shall not be in want. And you tell your story. I am fearful. I am scared. I am stressed up. I am so anxious. I am so fed up now. I am sick and tired. I am so angry now. I am so upset right now. I mean, you are totally against the grain of God. You are acting totally opposite than what God wants you to act. You are showing God that you're totally not interested in Him being your father and you want to copy Him as a dear child. You are throwing everything in the face of God saying, I I am not. I am upset. I am angry. I am woo. I am the. I am God says. Be imitators. Hmm? Moses, I made your mouth. I will be with your mouth. God, I, 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 I can't do this. God said, I already told you I am. So if you say, I'm weak, I'm already your strength. I'm sick, I'm already your health. I'm stressed up, I am already your peace. I'm not talking about a prayer. Oh God, give me peace. I'm not talking about a prayer. Oh God, give me gentleness. Oh God, help me to be kind. I'm talking about, he says, learn of me. I am gentle and meek of heart and you will find rest for your souls. It's not teach me gentleness. It says, if he's my father and I'm his child and I've got his spirit, then I am gentle. I am kind. I am peaceful. I am. But God, I am not eloquent. I am slow of speech. Can you believe I could not speak in front of people? Not one word. In our matric year, grade 12 year, we had to speak at the, uh, at the uh, what they call it nowadays, we call it mm, whatever, best speaker competition nowadays. Riedenaars hmm? competition. So I had to speak on, you know, atomic warfare. Because I love to write essays. Oh, we're far away from the message now, but it's, it's going to be good. And our, our, our teacher in Afrikaans, Oslong Duplessis, he was so long and skinny, oh, tall and skinny. But I love to write essays. This may be why I can preach today. I used to love to write essays. Man, and he said to me, Van Rensburg, with this essay, you're going to make a name for yourself. Take this essay just like it. Take it to that best speaker competition. Man, practice it. Just go and do it. You're going to be number one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I stood up that night. 
And they say, if, if you feel your mouth is dry, just rub this glandier at the bottom. Hmm? Oh, <laughs> Nothing happens. <laughs> I'll feel like I'm at a neck massage or something. <laughs> so I look at somebody and say, you've got a little rhyme that you start off with. So I'm standing, man, and did these people come into a cloud without the anointing, without anything. <laughs> Everything became so misty. You know, I didn't know nothing about Jesus and the anointing on <clears throat> so he said, he said, I'll just do it the way I did it. Forgive me for our Afrikaans right. <clears throat> Geachte meneer, die voorst het er. Wish my brother was here to tell the story. Mede skolere en amali hier. That was the last. I ran out <laughs> to the closest school toilets. I closed the door. I took out a Texan. I lit. I pulled it. It looked like a corkscrew. I didn't even stop to take another gun. <laughs> Forgive me, it's this true story. I never thought I'd tell the story again in church. So, as I was engulfed in the smoke, you know, if you smoked in our school, you, for two weeks you were not allowed to go anywhere and you got a spanking that nobody else could give you. And I heard this voice above the wall. You know, the walls are this high, so somebody was standing on the toilet next door and here was our schoolmaster looking over the wall. He said, Van Rensburg. <laughs> He said, it's not so bad. I said, if I open the door, you can take the photo. I'm going to pull the chain and say, goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> Forget it. It's for those who've got a mind. Okay, this is our home. Hmm? I am not able to speak in front of people. I am not eloquent of speech. I am not a person that can stand in front of me. Don't say, I am not. Say, I am more than a conqueror. I am able to do all things. Say, I am man, 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 man. I got saved. I got a hold of that scripture. And I said, I am able. If God says I am, then I am. God saved Tuesday. Friday I was standing on the street corner preaching. This little guy that... <clears throat> okay. You got it. Let's go to Jeremiah 1 and pick up the story of Moses. Verse 4. Then the word of the Lord came unto me saying, Before I formed you in the belly, I knew you. Before you came forth out of the womb, I sanctified you. Oh, oh, just keep your place. I'm just thinking of a psalm here. Psalm 139. Let's just go with me to one psalm, psalm 139. Is it right? Yes, I am right. Are you there? You are in Jeremiah 1, but you've got your finger there and you are in Psalm 139. Are you ready? I will praise thee. You are with me. For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. 
Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest part of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. How precious also are thy thoughts unto me, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I could count them they are more in number than the sand when I awake I am still with thee okay verse 5 Jeremiah 1 before I formed thee do you see the, the, the okay in the belly I thought somebody would shout I knew thee and before thou camest forth out of the womb I sanctified thee and ordained thee the prophet unto thee then said I O oh Lord behold I cannot speak, for I am a child. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go there. What did God say? I have called you. I've known you before you were born. I know you. I've sanctified you. So what should you say? You, you'd say, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. God knew me. I am known of God. I am called of God. I am chosen of God. I am anointed of God. I am sent forth of God. Say not, I am not. Say not, I am a child. Say not, I am not eloquent. Say, I am. I am. I am. Hmm. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He Himself was God. Nothing was made without Him that was made. Huh? Verse 14. This Word was made flesh and dwelt amongst us. So the unseen God, the invisible God, you will hear this over and over again till one day we get the revelation. This invisible God wanted to show to the world how he operates. So he decided to take his word and put it inside human form so that we can associate with God. Because God is unseen, God is creator, God is all-knowing, omnipotent, omniscient, all over. How can I associate with such a God? So this God takes that spirit, come over a little woman, make her pregnant, and here comes God, the seed word, now in flesh, and here he walks. God in flesh. To show you how God operates. But to associate with flesh so that you can associate with God because God has now associated with you. Now we can understand we can be imitators of God. We can copy Him because He already showed to us that in flesh He can operate as God and nothing is impossible to Him that believes. Mm -hmm. So here comes Jesus and He walks. Who are you? He says, oh, John chapter 6, five times. I am the bread of life. If you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you shall never taste death. Who are you to say? He said, oh, I am the bread that came down from heaven. No, 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 no. Moses gave us bread. No, Moses did not give you bread. Your fathers ate bread in the desert and they all dead. I am the bread that comes down from far. If you eat this bread, you shall never taste of death. They said, oh, this is blasphemous. We need to kill him. We need to stone him. He said, do you want to kill me? Because I said, I am. Hmm? Wow. Come on. Come on. Jesus, tell us straight who you are. Oh, I am the light of the world. Oh. Who are you? Oh, I am the fountain of living water. No, 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 no. Who are you? Hmm? Jesus, if you were here, John chapter, our brother would not have died. Oh, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he be dead, yet shall he live. But if you live and believe in me, 
You shall never see death. I am the resurrection. Do you believe this? Jesus. Wherever he goes, he is now trying to show us how God operates. When he speaks, what manner of man is this? That with the word he command the demons and they come out. What manner of man is this? With the word he calms the storm and stills the seas. What manner of man is this? With the word he tells the sick and they are healed. What manner of man is this? His word is not like the Pharisees and the scribes. His word is with power. No wonder it is the word that is now in flesh. It is God manifested in the flesh. Seen of angels. Angels, the invisible God is now in human flesh showing us how God operates. Be ye imitators therefore of God. Copy him. No, I, 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 I am not able. Huh? I am strengthened with might in the inner man. So that God will do for me far and above anything that I can even think or pray because I am strengthened with might in the inner man hmm? I am able to do all things through Christ who strengthens me I am more than a conqueror through Christ who loves me I can do all things through Christ I am so if I take I am what I add show how much I take the word appreciate what God has done or throw it back in his face and say oh no Jesus you have not yet come in the flesh so I cannot yet receive what you have done so I am cannot go with any negative statement I am can only go with the word of God if it's not word it is not I am then I am not copying my father then I'm still living an individualistic life that I got from my father in the flesh then I am still bound to tradition religion and I don't come out of it I don't even see other people see I'm religious stubborn no I'm not going to say that I will say what I want to say because I want to say it because I am self-willed. What about surrendering and say it is no longer I that liveth, but Christ is now alive in me. Who is Christ? The Word in flesh. And the life I now live, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Not by faith in the Son of God, the faith of the Son of God. How does He operate? peace be still how does he operate Lazarus come forth how does he operate quiet and come out of him how does he operate learn of me I'm meek and gentle of heart and you will find rest for your soul what is your name how shall I say to the children of Israel who sent me Moses, go tell them, I am that I am. Tell them, I am has sent you. Oh, no. I can't do that. I, you know, I, I'm not that type of man that will do this. And, you know, I've got a personality and the thing that I grew. You know, I was born like it. Oh, so that's why you must be born again. Oh, this is just my character. That's why you've got to renew your mind. Hmm. Hmm. John 8. Okay, now Jesus is busy with his I am. I am, I am, I am. Hey, the people just don't like it at all. Every time he's I am, they want to stone him, kill him, throw him down a mountain. They just don't like it at all. Hmm? They say, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. 
He said, listen, man, if you start knowing this word and let this word abide in you, you shall be my disciples indeed. And this word shall make you free because you shall know the truth. And if this truth has set you free, you shall be free indeed. They say, ah, no, we've never been slaves. I mean, they already forgot what they did in Egypt. We've never been slaves. We are the children of Abram. Jesus says to them the same as what John says them, to them. He said, man, you know what? I can make out of these stones children of Abram. You are not the children of Abram. You know who your father is? Your father is the devil. Now, this is Jesus talking to religious people. Your father is the devil. Say, ah, uh-uh, you have the devil. He said, no, 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 I am of God. I am, I am from above. You are from beneath. This is the same discourse. I am from above. You are from beneath. No, 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 no. How can you say, you know, we are not the children of Abram. We know Abram. Jesus said, hey, can I talk to you? Hmm? Are you where am I? John 8. Uh, where is John? Hey, John. Where are you? Yes, here it is. Verse 57, Hmm? verse 56, your father Abram rejoiced to see my day and he saw it and was glad. Hey, remember Genesis 14? Abram come back from his battle with the three armies, all all those armies of Kedil Omer, remember? And and he slayed them all and the king of Sodom met him and then Melchizedek met him and he brought bread and wine and he gave it to Abram. Galatians 3, 8, the gospel was first preached to Abram. Jesus, Jesus says, Abram wished to see my day, longed to see my day, and he saw it. So in other words, Jesus said, I appeared unto Abram and showed him how I was going to die, how I was going to be the Savior. I preached the gospel to him. I gave him bread and wine. Abram rejoiced to see my day and he saw it. Let's read. Hmm? He says, your father Abram, after he already said to them, for Abram is not their father. Then said the Jews unto him, you are not yet 50 years old. And hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am. Makore shikhavakali toko shikibu hatete. If there's anything you want, I am. When hundreds of years ago they needed a deliverer, I am the Lord your deliverer. When they wanted health in the desert, I am the Lord that healeth thee. When they needed peace with all the nations, I am your peace. When they wanted a shepherd to lead them through the wilderness according to Isaiah, I am the good shepherd. I I am. Before Abram was, I am. And in the distant future, when your great, 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 great grandchildren will be running around, I am. I am your provision. I am your protector. I am your provider. I am your life giver. Hmm? I'm talking about something greater than prayer. I'm talking about something greater than just a confession. I'm talking about putting yourself in a place. Be ye imitators of God as dear children. Copy Him. Huh? Father, I pray that they will be one. Even as you and I are one. I and the Father are one. So if God says, I am, then Jesus comes and he says, I am. Then he leaves you to say, then I am. Then he starts the good shepherd story. Now they're really getting angry. I am the door. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lay down. You know, all the others that came before me are thieves and robbers. But I am. Hmm? They said, no, 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 no. He said, if you struggle to understand it, I and the Father am one. Now they're really angry. No spookle clipper. I mean, they are so angry. They're going to nail him. They're going to... Okay. Listen. Hmm. Verse 30, John chapter 10. I and my, now John chapter 10 is the whole story about I am the good shepherd. I and my father are one. Then they took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of these works do you stone me? The Jews answered him saying, for a good work we stone you not. 
but for blasphemy. Because thou, listen, I'm speaking to you and you to hear the word of the Lord coming to you. Because you being a man, are you there? Because you being a man, make yourself God. I'm talking to somebody in the house, somebody watching my TV. You being a man, making yourself God. Jesus answered them, is it not written in your law? Hey, is it not written in your Because they are on the law, man. So Jesus now quoted from Psalm 86. Is it not written in your law? I say, you are God's. I am. I am. Verse 35. If he called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, those prophets there, and the scripture cannot be broken. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he not said, and shall he not do it? Hath he not spoken, and shall it not come to pass? Let God be true, and every man a liar. Thus saith the Lord, I am... Say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified. I have sanctified you in the womb of your mother before you were born. I've already justified and called you. Say ye of him who the Father has sanctified and sent into the world. Thou blasphemous because I said I am the Son of God. Galatians 4, as long as the heir is a child, he differs nothing from a slave, but is under tutors and governors till the time appointed of the father. Now Galatians 3 already told us the law was our tutor, our schoolmaster to show us the way to Christ. But now that Christ has come, we are no longer under the law. Hmm? Because Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law being made a curse for us that we can receive the blessings of Abraham and the Spirit of God. You know the story. So Galatians 4. As long as the child heir is a child, he differs nothing from a slave, but he's under the tutors, the law, governors till the time appointed of the father. But when the fullness of time came, full stop, came, God sent forth his son. Born of a woman that was made under the law. To redeem those that were under the law. To give them so that they might receive the adoption of son. And now that we are the children of God. John 1, 11, He came unto his own, his own received him not. Verse 12, but as many as received him to them gave him the power to become the sons of God. Verse 13, who owe their birth not to blood, neither to the flesh, neither to the will of the flesh, because they are born of God. Okay, with that in mind. Because we are now children. Are you ready? God has put the spirit of his son in us, crying, Abba, Father. That makes you and you and you, 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 and me, sons of God. Now Romans 8, creation, verse 19, is subject to frailty because of him who's subjected. Now we all, we have the first fruits of the Spirit together with creation, grown in his an earnest expectation, waiting for the sons of God to come to the front and say, I am a son of God. Who are you being a man making yourself God? Does not your law say, I say that you are God? If it is true that to whom the word came, they said it. Is it then the word cannot be broken? How come we that are now the children of God got the spirit crying, Abba, my father, my father. Can you not now say, I am a son of God. And if I'm a son of God, God is my father. And if he's my father, be ye imitators of God. Copy him. Huh? 
Come on, we have spoken now so much about changing the scenery by changing the sound. What you confess is what you possess. What you say is what you get. Name it, claim it, frame it. You call it anything. But after all these years, what do we say? What do you say? Leave me, I will say this. Who are you pleasing? Who are you spiting? And who are you upsetting? Whose life are you ruining? Your mind, your brain, has got something that it releases some endo orphans. I don't know what orphans, but some orphans, dolphins, endo more dolphins, something. I'll go check it up again. Endorphins, your brain, okay? That makes you be able to produce properly and perform properly. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. But most people live under stress, anxiety, anger, upsetness, hurt, broken hearts. So the brain cannot produce that. That's why people live a life that is not good. Now, this is scientifically, you check it on the internet, endorphins, how it is released. If somebody shows an act of kindness, I come and I say, Shanky, come, he gives me money. He gives me the money. He gives me the money. Doesn't care what his state is like. He can just give it to me because it's pressed in the offering or he just want to give it. So he just give it to me. I receive it as an act of kindness. So I say, wow. Because I needed the money. So the wow is a kindness that's released from me and it immediately releases that endorphins. Okay. Wow. So every time I, wow. Wow, wow. Huh? Something like, I don't know, but something like 8% of the endorphins that is produced is then produced. But if somebody comes and shows an act of kindness, hey man, I just want to bless you. And he receives it then. Then it goes up to something like 24% of endorphins is released. Okay. <clears throat> so Paul says, Be ye kind one to another, tender hearted. It just. <clears throat> Let your kindness. Afrikaans say vriendelijkheid. Let your kindness be shown to everybody because the Lord is at hand. It means God is so close. But if you show kindness, He starts revealing. But if I don't come with the spirit of kindness, mm, God which is at hand now is removed. And then I got to act out of the flesh. And I've got to do things in a different way, like we've been taught through ages upon ages. And this man has stood in this church over and over and over and said, who's going to break the cycle? Somebody must break the cycle and say, I choose to be different. I'm going to be gentle. I'm going to be kind. I'm going to be loving. I'm going to be sweet. I'm going to imitate God. I'm going to copy him. Okay. If somebody doesn't do it this way, then everybody's going to do it that way. That's tradition. What about years ago, we were in the tent. And this is what I said to the people. I trust this word so much that I believe it has the power to do what it says it will do. So if I just preach this word, 
people will be saved without me doing anything. They will be delivered without me doing anything. They will be healed without me doing anything. And we have testimonies upon testimonies. Because while you were preaching, uh, the pain disappeared. While you were preaching, cancer disappeared. While you were preaching, without prayer. Amen. Just believing and trusting the word. But now we go and bring portion of self into the word. Why don't we just trust the word? How is I am. In the beginning was the word. Not opinion. The word. Not reasoning. The word. Jesus says over and over to the fair. Why reason you? Why do you? Yeah, but. Yeah, but. No, 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 no. Why reason you? Jesus is to be believed, not to be reasoned. Um. I don't know where we were. I said, what did I, didn't I say Isaiah? I said Isaiah 33. Okay. There's so much in this word. You are still here, are you? Do you say, I am blessed, or do you say, I'm upset? Do you say, I'm happy, or do you say, I'm so unhappy now? Do you say, I'm successful, or do you say, nothing is working out for me? What is behind your I am confession? Is it I am what God says? Or is it I am what you think, say, reason, tradition? This is a hard word. No, it's not. It's so simple. Just add the word behind your I am. I remember when I got sick, somebody gave me an iPod with a lot of sermons on. While I was listening to it, I thought, ah, this is good. Yeah? Then Tom Scarella emailed me something to put it on my iPod, and emailed it to me on my email, and gave it to me on my cell phone. Two sermons by Paul Yonggi Cho, who built the biggest church in the world. He's now close to his 80s, strong as ever, young as ever but he says when he feels like there's a temptation to get sick he said now you must understand in 40 years of ministry I've never been off work one day never been sick one day he said I didn't say I was not tempted to be sick he said but when the temptation come I quickly run to my church and I walk around my church and thousand times I say I am healed. I am healed. With the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. With the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. With the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. He said, I've never entered the church and exited it feeling the same. I was always well when I walked out. But will you say a thousand times, I am prosperous, I am prosperous, I am prosperous. Because I take a scripture. You shall be prosperous in all your ways, Joshua 1. You shall be successful in whatever you do. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Your progress will be seen by all. Hmm? In blessing, I will bless you. You feel all the curses of hell is broken out again. I tell you, you, my family is cursing me. You must see the emails we get. You know, there's curses on my house. There's curses on my house. My uncle has cursed me. My house is cursed. Break the curse. Walk through the house, say, I am blessed. 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 No, but you will not do it. You will rather say, I am cursed. No, change it. You see, why would we rather say the negative thing? No, 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 no. Wait a bit. God just about, let me handle this. I married this dude. Let me sort him out. You, God just. God says, hey, calm down. You say, Holy Spirit, you're not married to this. Would you leave me, let me sort him out? God says, go ahead. Like I said, through the years, many have taught it. 
I have taught it when I just got in the ministry. I told on the leaders of I had a series on Akus, Sefer Israel, Akus. And I spoke on, God give you a blank check. I mean, I'm talking about 1980, 81. Yo, I used to preach that stuff, man. But lately God's saying, hey, it's more than a confession that I'm trying to prove. It's a state of being. It is be. Hmm? To be? Or not poopy. <laughs> he, 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 he. Okay, forget it. Right. I want to show you the powerfulness if you understand what you are entering in if you take a hold of the I am thing of Almighty God. Jesus now in Gethsemane, Judas is going to betray him. Remember the story. Hmm? Verse 4. Judas is there receiving the man coming here. Verse 4. Jesus therefore knowing all things that should come upon him. Went forth and said unto them. Whom seek he? They answered him. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus said unto them. I am. No, no, no. For now. You know by now in this. If it's in italics. It's not in the original. The translators put it in to help you read more easily. To make the English sound more English. Thou thou thouest for uh, the mountain that climbeth. Okay. So if it's italics, it's not there. So let's leave the italics in the next few verses. Whom seek ye? Verse 5. They answered him, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus say unto them, I am. And Judas also, which betrayed him, stood with him. And as soon as he said unto them, I am, they went backward and fell to the ground. Imagine, here comes all those band of Roman soldiers. I mean, and they're led by Judas Iscariot. He's going to betray him with a kiss. He said, you know, the one that I give you. So Jesus is standing. He knows what's going to happen. He knows Judas is going to come to the front. He knows Judas is going to kiss him. He knows they're going to catch him. He knows. He already told them, this day I will be betrayed by the fair. This day my life will be taken away. He already told them. Jesus, or, Peter already rebuked him. And then Jesus rebuked him back and said, get behind me, Satan. He knows everything. Yeah. Yet, he says, who, who do you see? You understand? A whole band of soldiers with swords. Jesus of Nazareth. I mean, a whole battalion of soldiers. Jesus, I am. When he said, the Bible says, as soon as he said, I am, they all, wow, out in the power. He didn't say anything. He didn't lay hands on them. He didn't blow on them. He didn't spit on them. He didn't lay. He, he just said, I am. Wow. Moses. Who am I going to tell them? Send me. What is your name? I am. That I am. Tell them I am. Here comes Jesus. I am, I am, I am. Father, let them be one as I and you, you and I. I. So be ye imitators of God. Copy him as dear children. Yes, but Kubus, yeah. I wonder if I should. Can I do one more, maybe? Remember. John 8, John 12, you don't have to go there. I'm just going to try. A few times Jesus says, I am the light of the world. But then in Matthew 5, 14, he says, you are the light of the world. You are a city that's set on a hill that can... Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. 
You are the light. I am the light. Hmm? Yeah. You are the light. Now look at chapter 12 of John still. Verse 36. I just thought I'll bring this in if you want it. Hmm? No. How? Verse 36, amplified. While you have the light, believe in the light. Have faith in it. Hold to it. Rely on it. I am the light. That you may become sons of the light and be filled with light. Okay. When did Jesus say this? Go back to verse 21. The same came therefore to Philip, which was of the side of Galilee, and desired him, saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Hey, we want to see Jesus. Jesus says, Don't go tell them, I'm not showing. Hmm? Okay, you, okay. Verse 24. I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall in the ground and die, it abideth alone. Talking about himself. But if you die, it bringeth forth much fruit. Amplified. Less a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just one grain. It never becomes more, but lives by itself alone. But if it dies, it produces many others and yields a rich harvest. This was my revelation, April 1985, Easter weekend. God wanted sons. So he planted a son in the earth. If a corn of wheat doesn't fall again, he bides alone. He alone is Jesus to be seen. But when he dies, he's going to bring forth much fruit. So while you have the light, I am the light. Believe in the light, cling to the light, hold to the light. But this light is going to go. Then you will all be sons of light. You will be filled with light. Then you will be the light. Hmm? So, 1 Corinthians 15, verse 10, our new t-shirt. I am that I am. No. By the grace of God. No. No. But by the grace of God. Let's quote it for those who's checking me out. But by the grace of God. I am that I am. And I have not received the grace of God in vain. Hey. Hey you. Hey you. So what is God? Judah, are you listening? So what is God saying? God is saying. If you truly receive the grace message which is preached all over the world for 2,000 years and a lot of emphasis has been laid on it the last year. If I really receive the grace of God, then this is what I will say. I am. That I am. Then I don't say I'm weak. Let the weak say I am strong. Then I don't say I am sick. I say with the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. Then I don't say I'm struggling. I say I am successful. Then I don't say I'm not getting anywhere. I say I am prosperous. Then I don't say, you know, you know I'm so angry. Then I say, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river in my soul. Oh, I've got peace like a river. I've got peace like a river. I've got He's like a river in my... Hmm? I'm so upset now. I worked with a professor in Poitiers room and I designed electronic instruments. He said, I've got no ears on my arms quirk. I said, yeah, that's, that's hot, bro. Yeah, yeah. There's a quarter on speaker's book. Hey, why do you want to be quiet? Why do you want to be upset? You're only harming yourself and everybody around you. The old people used to say, count till ten. Maybe you should try it. Maybe you 
Halleluja, Halleluja. But, let's cut the buts. Let's break the cycle of the forefathers. When I realized a couple of years ago after my father's death, when I realized I'm starting to act just like him, I never did before he died. And I realized, why am I acting like him? Because he's now dead. The spirit of anger that he had is now not in him anymore because he's now dead. So that spirit of anger is going around looking for somebody that was closely associated. Call it familiar spirit. So he was knocking at my door and I started getting very angry. So angry that I one day showed my family what I could do when I still did the karate thing when I was still young. No joke, I did. I smashed nine holes in split seconds through a wooden door. Nine, nine holes. Nine or from top to bottom. I said, That's what I can do if I'm angry. <laughs> we laugh. I wept. I turned around and said, Why did I do it? Why did I do it? All these years I'm serving Jesus, never got upset for nothing. Why did I do it? And I realized. But your father was always angry. And I just said, Father, I forgive my father for hurting us with his anger. All I can remember is an angry father. I know he was a good man. I told it to you last year when I preached about the blood. Just play if you want to play on. I play one chord over play. And I said, uh, I forgive my father. Because all I remember, it's funny when you grow up, you don't remember the good if they were both. You remember the bad. See, everybody. But he was good. Now that I realize the power of the blood, I see all his goodness. I see how kind he was, how he bought me a bicycle, how he took me to the hostel, and how he gave me pocket money. Now I see it. Previously, I never saw it. Now I listened to this guy the other day, a motivational speaker, doesn't even know Jesus. Hmm? Doesn't believe that Jesus is the Savior. He believes in the higher self type of thing. He says, he always struggled with overeating. And apart from the overeating, he got drunk many times. And apart from getting drunk, he had an anger that he couldn't control. He said, and at the age of 34, he went to his father's tomb that the father died when he was a young boy. He said, and the only thing he can remember about his father is how he hurt his mother and his two brothers. They were three sons. And how they were always hurt because the father was always angry. He said, and he just felt... He need to forgive this guy because he's carrying a load with him. No Jesus. No blood. He went to the tombstone. He said, Father, I forgive you for everything you've done with your anger to me, my mother, and my brothers. He said he got up. He never drank again. He never indulged in food again. And he never lost his temper again. He's now 74. He said, never again. No blood, no Jesus. Just speaking the word. He said, I walked away. He said, I became one of the kindest people on earth. Sorry that I must say it. He said, but ask my family. I became one of the gentle, meekest people on the earth. I just got out of the family thing of anger. And he said, I never did the wrong again. I said, how much more? How much more? 
We who have the blood of Jesus, the name of Jesus, this is my body broken for you. Eat it. This is my blood shed for the remission of sin. When you drink it, remember how I died for you. And if you do it, you shall not be weak, you shall not be sick, and you shall never die. Peace. Peace. that passes all understanding to rule and govern your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Love so big that it burns like a mighty flame in your life. Joy so great that you can't help but giggle 24-7. How would you like to have love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, Kindness, meekness, temperance, faith. Against such there is no law. Nothing to make you feel guilty. Be ye therefore kind one to another. The Lord is at hand. I am. <laughs>